कैसा गियर प्रीवियस गियर क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन है वो जो वन पे वन तो स्टार्ट विथ शिवानी uh myself uh, i did masters in computer science in india but uh, i didn't get a chance to work here we recently completed salesforce admin certification so wanted to pursue salesforce development uh, course as well okay uh, so you guys are you from salesforce can you a uh, little loud please uh, you guys had any prior experience on salesforce Uh, we just uh, did our certification in salesforce administration no okay. work experience okay no work experience okay all you guys are recently graduated uh, no okay good great so next uh, sureka please uh, hi i have done my bsc computers in india so there there been a long gap in the career uh recently i too have completed this uh, certification this for certifications and uh, trying to do uh, go for this development uh, certification i think in the in the last class i think you told me that you are not familiar with uh, the coding part right yes yes we all uh, basically yeah we all we uh, like the person uh, jyoti did not join but we five uh have uh, like we have a gap in the career and uh, trying to restart our career and uh, no coding experience i think one has one has to experience but we don't have any coding experience okay so bindu kanchana and also your friends right yes hi bindu hi kanchana yeah hi um my name is bindu and um, yeah i also recently completed this salesforce admin certification uh, now want to go for um, development but i don't have any coding experience prior um, but i do have uh, testing experience in it field um, i worked as a manual tester for 4 years but now i am in a break so just want to shift my career to salesforce okay uh, so for which company uh, i was working for moody sorry what it's moody analytics a risk analysis application basically it does ratings for all kinds oh, okay okay yeah okay um so kanchana can you hear me yeah hi uh can you introduce yourself please yeah um yeah actually i don't have any work experience um, last year um, i learned about qa testing i wanted to try in the qa uh, then with my issues i couldn't do that then and now i want to do sales first i don't know yeah but i i, I have some programming knowledge like java i learned java the core concepts in java okay. that's it Okay, thanks so much, guys. Uh, so it was a nice introduction about everyone, everyone of you, and uh, it's good that you guys completed the Salesforce administration. So it will add a uh, weightage for your profile or resume. So it's good. So I could give you guarantee you that so by the end of this development course as well, so you will be having the development certificate too. Okay, great. so before we start with the development um, so now let me ask you a few questions uh, about the salesforce not a any questions from the salesforce have been part then just a general questions so why you guys have chosen the salesforce is there any reason behind it or someone has suggested you for the salesforce so what is the reason behind to take up the salesforce course anyone like uh, in job searching like when i try to search for jobs i see lot of jobs for salesforce admin and developers so um, i thought like it's a booming technology now so just want to uh, yeah test our uh, future in salesforce okay. Okay. so what you guys is said correct so so the currently the booming market 
the booming book technology in the market is the the salesforce and also they could say the salesforce is actually the hot kick the mm -hmm. hot kick in india and uh, uk usa and australia and uh, countries yeah. if you have the experience in the salesforce uh, if you are <clears throat> if you are having the genuine experience so then definitely you will be getting the good salary in salesforce and you will be getting a good position So before we start with Salesforce, so do you guys have any doubts or anything related to Salesforce admin part? Anything that is running on your mind or everything is clear? Okay. So let me share my screen. So today's class will start with the development. So let me create an access for the development, developer edition, basically. Can anyone of you tell me in the meantime, what are the different uh, types of editions we have in Salesforce? Uh, we have like a professional uh, unlimited and developer. Okay. So apart from the developer, um, professional enterprise and unlimited, do you guys know any other additions? Enterprise? No, okay. So professional enterprise unlimited developer. Apart from these three, sorry, four editions. So what are the other editions that you guys know? Uh, the free edition that we use. Then? So this is the first thing so which I will explain in our first class of admin part. So basically we have other editions like the manager edition, uh, group edition, personal edition, and uh, the book, uh, individual edition. In interview, if you if interview ask you a question, so what was the edition that you are currently using in your uh, current project? So what would be your answer? Developer. Why developer? Normally we say um, a professional or unlimited. I mean, based on the company. If it is a small company, we say professional or something like that or if it is a big company we say unlimited okay is it depends on the company size or it depends on the uh, i mean the number of businesses that you implement yeah it depends on the businesses like they i mean customers okay number so of users okay so now let's suppose uh if the next question from my side uh, being an interview interviewer so then so what is uh, the count what is the count of the number of users from your current application what would be your answer uh, we don't do the correct number maybe we say more than thousand or two thousand yeah so here I'm not testing you anything, so I just want to tell you how the interview process will be. Okay. So, so what is your answer? Sorry? What is your answer for the number of users that are running in your current application? 
So when you say thousand, and what was the addition that you told me? Is it ten rupees or forty rupees? Unlimited. Unlimited. Okay. So then next my question will be to test whether you are genuine candidate or not a genuine candidate. So now my cross question it will be. So when you have choose a thousand users, why have not choose the professional or enterprise? Why have choose the hundred? So then what will be your answer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is a chance that we can uh, uh, increase the uh, users in future. Sorry, someone is saying something I can't hear properly. Yeah, there is a chance that we will be increasing the number of users in the future. So it is unknown. Ah, uh, Surika, can you take your mic closer? I can't hear you properly. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, my answer was like uh, in future we would be using uh, we would be increasing the number of users, so we are using an limited edition. Okay, so which is a valid and good answer. Hello. Yeah, which is a valid and a good answer. Yes, yes. Okay, good point. Um. So now, whenever we are just, um, I mean, uh, in the meantime, I log into the application, which takes to one to two minutes of time. So in those span of two minutes, we'll just discuss this kind of uh, the question. Okay. So sorry today, uh, it started a bit lately. So starting tomorrow, we'll be on the shop at the same time. So when you start with the development course, so which you had already completed the sales for that main part. Uh, so now when you started the Salesforce development, so in the Salesforce development, basically we have three different programming languages. One is the Salesforce Apex programming language. One is the Salesforce Visual Force markup language. And one is the Salesforce Lightning components. Lightning components. So first we'll start with the very, the first programming language. So, which is called Apex. Okay. So, for the first two classes, it will be completely basics. So, first we'll discuss the basics, then only we'll jump on to the coding part. Okay. So, I want you two guys to be more, uh, uh, should be getting more knowledge on the basic side. Now, so when you start with the Apex programming language, so what is an Apex? So, what is the definition of an Apex? And in which scenarios you have to choose Apex programming language. Okay. So now first we'll see the definition of your Apex. So Apex is nothing but your, it's a strongly typed programming language. It's a strongly typed programming language. Okay. So which means, so similar like your Java programming language. So Apex is also one of your strongly typed programming language. So, which you will write is to do the statements. Where you will write it to control your statements. So, now this Apex programming language, so this also follows your OOPS concepts. OOPS concepts. So, which you call it as an object oriented programming structure. Kind of thing. So, now, so whenever you look into the syntax or whenever you look into the complete flow, if it could be 100 lines or 1000 lines of code of Apex. The complete structure on the flow of Apex programming language, it just looks like your Java-like syntax. Java-like syntax. So that is why we are discussing the demo. So if you are aware of the Java programming language, so then it will make you easier for you to understand the Apex programming language. Okay. So this Apex is a strongly typed, strongly typed object-oriented programming language, uh, which is a similar like your Java-like syntax. So basically, this Apex programming language, so it allows your developers. So where you can 
for your project, you will be having your own Salesforce developers. So Salesforce developers, they can write their Apex programming language. So why do they have to write this Apex programming language? So they will write this Apex programming language to execute, okay, to execute flow and transactional control statements. So any developers, they will write the Apex programming language to execute the flow and transactional control statements. So what do you mean by that? Now let's suppose I have some statements. So some conditional statements. So now I want to have this conditional statements. I want to write it. I want to have some control. So which one, which one will come first, which one will come second, and which one will come third. So now I want to have the control on the statements that I want that I want to do execute. So whenever you want to control the statements to be executed, so you can control your statements only by using the Apex programming language. Okay, next. Whenever you read any piece of code, any piece of Apex programming language, so all these programs, it will get stored. It will get stored on the platform called force.com platform, so which we are discussing in the demo part. So force.com is one of the platform, so which acts like a database. So now in this platform, this force.com platform, it completely acts like a database. So which in results, whatever the Apex classes or the any piece of code that you write, everything it will get stored on the platform called post.com. Okay, next. So whenever you talk about Apex is one of the programming language, similar like your Java. Okay, so there are some predefined, there are some standard, there are some built-in functionality. There are some predefined standard built-in functionalities. And those functionalities are DML calls. So what is the DML? Data manipulation language. So by using this data manipulation language, you can do a lot of functions. And those functions are insert, update, delete, these things. Okay. So now let's suppose now I want to create a new record. I want to insert a new record. So how we can insert a new record? I'll go to an application. I'll go to an object. Okay, I'll click on any object. So I'll create a new record. So this is a manual process. So now, how to insert a record, or how to update a record, or how to delete a record using the Apex programming language? So this we can do it by using your DM calls, which is nothing but your insert, update, or delete. Okay. Now, now let's suppose now you are inserting a new record. Now, when you're inserting a new record, let's suppose you have the validation rules. Okay, so by using this validation rules, okay, so by using this validation rules, one of the account record is not inserting into the database. So one of the validation rules is, is hitting it to not to create a new record. So what is happening? So whenever you're trying to create a new record, you are getting some validation rule saying that one of the mandatory field is missing. So what does it mean? Here, the insertion, whatever the insert that you are trying to do is getting failure, is getting failed. The insert is not successful here because some validation is throwing. So that is why the whatever the insert function that you are trying to do manually, so this is getting failed. Like the same way, from the programming, whenever you do any of the DML calls like insert, update, or delete, if it gets failure, if the functions get failure, then what will happen? Then all the failure calls will get catch up under the exception called DML exception error. For each and every error, so there will be some exceptions. For the DML, which is the data manipulation language also, there is an exception called DML exception. So this DML exception is one of the exception. So which handles or which which look after your 
DML failures. Okay, so apart from these DMLs, so there are some two new query languages in Apex. There are two new query languages, which is called SOQL and SOSL. Very, very, very important concept. Okay, so SOQL and SOSL. So these are the two different types of query languages. So where you can write a query and you can fetch the related reports. So, but here we are not going to discuss the SOQL and SOQL and SOSL now. So in our third class, we will discuss more about those SOQL and SOSL. So this SOQL, SOSL, DML, all these things are the predefined, predefined functions with supporting by your Apex programming language. Okay. So now, so now we have to understand in which are all the different scenarios we have to use Apex programming language. So what are the different scenarios that we have to use Apex programming language? Okay, now. So now use Apex programming language if you want to. If you want to. First one. If you want to create web services. So use Apex programming language if you want to create the web services. So what is web service? Which is nothing but an integration. So where you can integrate from the salesforce.com application to the third party environments outside of the box, out of the box functionalities. So whenever you want to do the integration from the Salesforce to the third party environments outside of the Salesforce servers, so then you have to do the callouts, which is nothing but your web services. So in this kind of situation or in this kind of scenario, you have to go to the Apex programming language. Okay. Next point number two, create Apex programming language if you want to create email services email services so what is an email services so let's suppose uh, so now we have some salesforce unique email id okay so from the salesforce you have generated some unique email id so every time you send out some email to this unique email id automatically a record has to get generated or created into the salesforce application so every time you send an email to the email ID, Salesforce unique email ID, based on the information that you provide within the email, a new record has to get created in the, the Salesforce application, which is called your email services. So this can also be done so by using the email services. So if you want to do any kind of these email services, so then you have to go to the Apex programming language. Point number three. So use Apex programming languages. So if you want to perform complex validation rules, if you want to perform the complex validation rules over multiple objects. So let me give an example. Now on the account object, we have the phone field. On the contact object also, we have the phone field. Okay. So now the requirement is write a validation rule, write a validation rule in such a way that whenever you are updating the value of phone on the contact or whenever you're updating the value of the phone on the contact, it has to check to with the related account related phone. And if the value is uh, not same, whatever the value that you're updating on the contact is not the same as your account phone, then throw the validation error message. So when now you're updating some contact phone, that contact phone has to be the same with your account phone. If they are not same, then throw the validation error message. So here what we are trying to validate, we are trying to validate a phone value across multiple objects. Across multiple objects. If this is the requirement, you cannot write a standard validation rule. You cannot write a validation rule by using your standard process. 
in this case you have to go to the apex programming language in case if you want to write a validation rules which comes across the objects whenever it is across the objects you should definitely go for the apex programming language only. so point number four so use apex programming language if you want to create create complex businesses processes complex businesses process that are not supported by the that are not supported by your workflow rule so these are the completely basics so use apex programming language so whenever if you want to create complex businesses processes that are not supported by your workflow rule okay so now let's suppose the requirement is we have a, a requirement in such a way that so whenever a contact contact report so whenever a new contact is inserted whenever a new contact is created automatically create a event automatically create a event by using the workflow rule okay so now as per your experience on the salesforce administration so now you guys tell me so whether this is possible through the workflow rules or not through the workflow rules can we create an event automatically once the new contact is inserted into the database the question to you Yes, we so can create. Event means it's a task. Is it a task? No, event is an event. Yeah, we can create events through what we know. Action. We can create a task, but uh, we can't create event. Yeah. Yeah. So now here the answer is we can create tasks, but not any events. Events yeah. is a different. Events is nothing but a scheduling meeting. The task is nothing but something, an action to be done. So these are the diff two different functionalities. So both are actually part of the activities, but activities are of two types, which is a task and events. So now by using the workflow rule, you cannot create an event, but you can create a task, right? Now, so if this is your requirement upon creating a new contact, if you want to send an event, or if you want to create an event, which cannot be done or which cannot be processed through your workflow rules. So in this scenario, you should definitely go with the Apex programming language. Okay, now. So now whenever basically, now let's suppose, uh, whenever you start with any of the programming in the real time. Okay, so the first thing that you have to start with is you have to write a an apex class okay followed by your apex trigger followed by your apex test class for whatever the logic that you want to write it or whatever the one you want that you want to implement you have to write three things apex class apex trigger and apex test class so forget about uh, forget about the test class for the time being so what is an Apex class? What is a class? So what does it contain? So basically the Apex class, it will contain your logic. So this will contain exactly your logic. Okay. So once you have your own logic, so this logic you will call within the trigger. You will call within the trigger. So where does we, where does we have the logic? The logic is in the class. So now, we have to invoke the class into the trigger. We have to invoke the class into the trigger level. So why we have to invoke the class into the trigger? So because once you have the logic, you have to define, you have to define when exactly this logic has to get triggered. So you have to define from the trigger level. So when exactly you want to trigger this logic, is it when you are inserting a record or is it when you are updating existing record or is it when you are deleting a record okay so when exactly you want to trigger this kind of logic so that will define within your trigger level okay 
so now as we had just come across with apex class trigger and test class so now for your understanding so i'll quickly create a class trigger and a test class so still we haven't completed the basics concept yet so i'll just create a class test class and a trigger okay for your understanding to where to write a class and how to execute this so if you could able to understand the class logic and trigger logic if it is fine okay it's pretty good or if in case if you don't understand what i am writing in a class and trigger don't worry don't worry about the syntaxes and everything so we will definitely see it in our upcoming classes okay so now i'll just quickly show you how to write a class and a trigger with taking some example logic so here the logic is so let's suppose we have one of the object name book the object name is book okay so here within this object name book so we have one of the field called price yeah one of the field called price now whenever you are inserting a new book record automatically the price value it has to get discounted with 20% 20% discount now let's suppose i am creating a new book record with the price as some 100 dollars 100 dollars the moment the record is inserted into the database that hundred dollars has to get calculated, has to get calculated with this twenty percent discount, and automatically a new value has to get shown on the UI page. Okay, so to do this, I'll write I'll write a class in a trigger. So before I write a class in a trigger, first of all, let me quickly create this object and a field. Okay, so I'll quickly create an object and a field. Okay. I hope you remember how to create an object. So it's a new custom object. Do you know what is track field history? To track the uh, activity of the company. Sorry, to track what? To track the activity. <laughs> okay, you mean to say that to track uh, the field field values, right? Yes. Okay. So, what are the number of what is the num maximum number of fields that we can track with the object? Twenty. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, sorry, I, unfortunately, somehow I got disconnected. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just creating an object. And a field also. Which is called rice. So price is a currency field, so which caps captures all your currency related data. Okay. So here you could see the books. So now let's suppose here I'm creating a new book, something called uh, some book name. 
So here you could see the price also, which is a currency field. So now I'll give some price. Let's suppose some thousand dollars. Okay. So click on save. So as we do not have any functionality behind, so what are the price that you are giving over here? It will show you the same value. So now the requirement is whenever I create a new book and if I'm setting a price, so this price has to get calculated with the 20% discount. And once the record is saved into the database, it has to show the new value. To write this, I'll write a class and a trigger quickly. So whenever you want to write a class, there are two ways that you can write. The first way is go to the setup, scroll down, under build, develop, expand your develop, and here we have the Apex classes. Okay, so click on Apex classes and click on the new over here. So once you click on new, so this is a place where you can write a new Apex class or else. So this is not a recommendable way. The recommended way is, so click on, on your name and here we have something called developer console, developer console. So click on the developer console. So this is a place where you can do all your development related things like you can write a class, test class, lightning components or trigger or any queries or if you want to do some debugging or if you want to do some any execute piece of code, anything that you can do from this developer console. Okay, let me decrease the size. Okay, now. So now here I'll write, a, I'll create a new quickly, a new class. So let's suppose click on the file. Okay, click on new and click on the Apex class. Okay, file, new and Apex class. Give the Apex class name. Let's suppose my hello world something. So I'll quickly create a, create a class. So this basic that we'll see it in the future classes. I'll create a method with the static. I just want to run it only one single time. That is why I'm using the static. Give some method name as something upgrade discount something. So where I'll pass the array of the books. As it is a custom object, I need to use underscore underscore C. Give some variable name as something books. And here, so pass this list of all the books, so into the for loop. So like I said earlier, so if you don't understand the logic or if you don't understand the syntax, so just leave it for the time being. So this we will see the logics and everything more in detail in the future classes. So 20% discount, so which means it has to get calculated with the point rate. 20% discount in sense, point rate. Okay. So now click on save. Okay, it's been saved. So this, like I said, so this logic we have to invoke into the trigger. So this trigger will define when exactly your logic has to get triggered. Is it when you are inserting a record or updating a record or deleting a record? So go back to your developer console and click on the file again and click on new. And now this time create a trigger. So now I'll create some trigger name something. Hello world trigger. That you write it on your account object. Sorry, book object books of so by default it will it will produce one you proper syntax standard syntax so this is your standard syntax so just two lines piece of code so get your array of books give some variable name and define when exactly this has to get triggered this has to work only for the newly inserting records which we call trigger dot so now the here the question is how to invoke the class, how to invoke the class into the trigger. So we can invoke 
by class name class name dot method name so within this class name class name dot method name so we have to send this list of all your books so when now you are newly inserting a new record okay so this books will go into this class and a method and what does this method will contain so this method is saying so when now you are inserting a book record automatically it gives some multiplication with 0.8 okay so this is what you have written a trigger for this one okay so now we'll test this so click on the books so i'll create a new book let's suppose the book name is wings of fire something okay i'll give the price for this one price is let's suppose some hundred dollars now the moment i insert a record into the database so this 100 it has to get multiply with with 0 0.8 100 into 0 0.8 which gives the 80 dollars where you are getting the 20 dollars discount 20 percent discount so now click on the save the moment i click on the save automatically the price will get calculated the new value you'll see this see when I'm inserting, it was $100. Once the record is inserted, it is $80. So now how this logic is firing? So this logic is firing from your trigger level. What does your trigger contains? Your trigger contains your class and method name. And what does your class and method contains? It contains your logic. So this is just a sample how to write your class and a trigger. Any questions? Any questions so far? So I'll take it as no. So in case if you guys have any questions anytime, please stop me and you can ask me to now so once we have the class and a trigger so now we have to define the test class okay so in tomorrow's in tomorrow's class so we will discuss so what is this test class why we have to write the test class or is it really required to write a test class can you deploy anything from the test environment to the production environment without writing a test class and in tomorrow's class, we will see how important and why we have to write a test class. How important we have to write a test class. So even without using a test class also, your logic will get function. Your logic will, will work. But to deploy something from your test environment to the production environment, you should definitely have a test class for your class and a trigger. Without having a test class, you cannot deploy anything from the test environment to the production environment. So why we have to write, have the test class and what is the reason behind this? So this we will see in the tomorrow's class. Okay. Any questions before we wrap up today's class? Yeah, but the, the test class, writing test classes is the tester's job, right? Do we need to write the test classes? The admin, administrator, or developers. So, we are actually implement this logic. I mean, where uh, where the person they create a class, so it's their responsibility only to create a trigger and also a test class as well. So, if I, I mean, try to, uh -huh. okay. please go. I ahead. mean, there is no testers in the Salesforce then. So, in case if you do not have a test class, so which we are going to discuss in a tomorrow's class. So which is mm -hmm. what if you not have a test class, so then you cannot deploy anything into the production environment. So when you are deploying something from a test environment, which is called UAT environment to the production environment, for a class and a trigger, you should also add a 
test class within the chain sets. If you do not add a test class, then application production and application, it will not even let you to deploy a class in a trailer. Why the reason being this? So that we'll understand more about it in detail in today. Okay. Okay. So all good. Amazing. Good. I'll take it as uh, no questions. So guys, thanks for your time for joining today's class. So we'll wrap up and we'll join back uh, tomorrow at the same time. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.